There are so many great character actors out there, and in the past, when they showed up in a film, just for a few scenes or so, they livened up the entire film. I'm thinking of people like Elijah Cook Jr., or M. Emmett Walsh, or Thelma Ritter, or um, Strother Martin, or Dub Taylor. But what happens when a character actor decides he wants to branch out, become a lead actor? Sometimes the results can be tragic. And that's what I want to talk about today. Welcome to the Kazdoy Closet. I'm Kazdoy. That's my closet full of all the stuff that I love. And today I want to talk about an actor that you probably never heard of, Laird Krigar. Let's talk about it. So it's New Year's Eve and I'm sitting around trying to figure out which uh, film I want to ring in the new year with and a fellow film fan and subscriber to this channel is also texting me and he said he just watched Hangover Square from 1945 and he said the last scene in this film sums up the year 2020 perfectly. So I was curious and I knew I had it in the closet. So I watched it and you know what? He was right. And I'm not going to tell you what that scene was, but I will say that um, it is the largest indoor fire scene ever staged. This is about a composer played by Laird Krigar, the subject of this video, and he's having these spells where he kind of uh, blacks out and then he has amnesia about what he did and he starts to believe that he may have, been, he may have killed a couple of people. And Krigar, you know, he actually played the lead in this which was unusual because he's usually a character actor playing a, uh, a smaller role. But I think because he obtained the rights to the novel, he got the right to play the lead in this film. Uh, he usually wasn't a lead because he was an unusual looking man, uh, six foot three, 300 pounds. But for this film, he went on a crash diet because he wanted to stop uh, playing the, the villain all the time. And so he went on a diet that involved some surgery, that involved some amphetamines, and it wasn't very safe. It had a, uh, took a toll on his heart, and it was two months before this was released. He um, died at the age of 31. So a tragic story for uh, Laird Krigar. Before this, he made The Lodger. And this is in uh, 1944. And this is about a lodger played by Krigar who rents a room in a boarding house. And there are murders going on in London. This is 1888. And it's Jack the Ripper. This is generally considered to be the best Jack the Ripper film made. Now this is a remake of the, um, of the Hitchcock silent film the look of this film is very noirish. Same director as Hangover Square. It's a very expressionistic. It's black and white, London, foggy, 1888. So it's gonna look great, right? Um, I think compared to the Hitchcock film, the question of whether the lodger is really the killer or not is more interesting in the Hitchcock film than in this film. But this is still very good. Krigar is great. Again, very sympathetic figure, uh, a sad figure. Um, there, there's a moment near the end that I found very reminiscent of uh, M, the famous German film. Uh, Krigar has an appeal, at first I thought, sort of like a Raymond Burr. And I'm not talking about Raymond Burr from the Ironside era, uh, era or um, Perry Mason. But if you see a lot of old film noir, Raymond Burr shows up as the heavy in many of those film noirs, but Krigar has, I think, more depth to him. There's more of a soul to him, and it's, it's a more of a layered performance that he gives, and Raymond Burr's kind of a one-note performance. This was a huge hit commercially and uh, critically, and so I'm going back a little bit chronologically, a little backwards, because before The Lodger, Krigar was either third or fourth build, probably fourth build, and I wake up screaming. Now, this is a true noir from 1941. Um, this is about um, a young lady who gets killed, and uh, they're trying to figure out who killed her. And it's, it's got a lot of uh, noir tropes, 
such as a, a seductive young lady, a murder, detectives, a flashback structure, um, the look, and um, Krigar again, excellent in this, in a smaller part, he plays a detective who is convinced that Victor Mature is the killer. And Krigar's performance is much more interesting than Victor Mature's performance and Betty Grable's in this one also. Before that, nope, correct myself, after this gun for hire, he was, uh, after I wake up screaming, he was also in this gun for hire. This is 1942, so this is a year after I wake up screaming. Get my chronology right. And I'll be honest, I've seen this one, it's been a while, and I was gonna watch it again, but I did not, I, but I am confident that he's great in this because he's just one of those actors like the ones I mentioned at the beginning of this, those great character actors who just, he always brings another level to the film and is the high point of the film. And he's just always great. And this is with Alan Ladd, Veronica Lake, another person that you really can't take your eyes off of, right? And this is generally a, considered a classic film noir, this gun for hire. So even though I haven't seen this recently, I'm looking forward to watching it again just to see Krigar's performance because you know that's the great thing about watching these older films, as most of you know, and watching foreign films is you, there's so much out there to discover. There's so many great films that have yet to be seen by most people. A lot of film noir, a lot of uh, films from other countries, and it's just a great way to discover new stuff that's out there and interesting stuff that's out there, new perspectives, um, new types of characters and plots and, and visuals. So that's my tribute to Laird Krigar. I think he's great and uh, hopefully um, you'll check it out too. Maybe there's a uh, comment you'd like to leave about another character actor you love that always brings the goods. Leave a thumbs up. Don't leave a thumbs down. Um, subscribe would be great. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you next time.